What's up, everybody? Um, back again with another fly time video. This is a uh, another fly that I like to throw for stripers. Uh, I'll throw it for large mouth, small mouth as well. But it's uh, typically I use it to imitate a larger bait fish, so it's really particularly effective for me this time of year during the shad run here in uh, Virginia. So the hook I've got in the vise right now is a Owner SSW four aught. Now these are a offset hook, so they've got a little bit of bend in them when you come, when they, they're not in line is the word I'm looking for. Um, I like to bend them straight with some needle nose pliers before I start tying. Uh, for this fly, you're gonna need mono thread. That is a important part of the fly. So go ahead and start your thread. This stuff, if you've never worked with it before, it can be a little slippery. It takes some getting used to. A lot of people struggle with it at first. There we go. And that'll work. Okay. So for flashing this fly, before I tie in any of the uh, synthetic fiber, I like to take three or four strands of lateral scale just to kind of put in the center of the fly. Like so. And we're gonna double those up. There we go. Thread slipping off of the bobbin there. No big deal. Catch those up. Thread. Now force it all back. That'll give us a nice uh, kind of shiny lateral line in the center of the fly. So now pretty much the entire fly is going to be tied with SF fiber. This is a very good synthetic fiber for tying bait fish. It's kind of a translucent fiber. Um, it also just the colors blend really well. So you get a lot of natural looking flies when you blend the colors together. You don't actually have to with like with other synthetics, mix them together when you tie them in. If you tie these in one in front of the other, the colors will actually just blend right together. So take you a small clump. This is probably the hardest part to teach with this fly is you do not need much of this material because it's gonna be four or five tie-ins on top and bottom. So by the time you get to the front of the fly, there's a lot more of this than you realize. So go ahead, capture it in the middle and fold it back. So this fly uh, is gonna be very annoying to tie if you don't have a rotary vise. You do a lot of flipping the fly upside down because you have to tie on the underside of the hook as well. So the main thing with this fly is pretty much keep taking the same sized uh, clumps of the SF fiber all the way to the head, and maybe the last two or three tie-ins you can get about twice as thick. That way you get a little bit of taper in terms of the material density. When you're tying on the belly, instead of tying just right on top of the hook and folding it back, I like to tie kind of at like a 45 degree angle off to the side of the hook and then fold it onto the other side. That way it drapes around the hook. So, I'll move our thread forward. And I'm gonna do one more tie in of white on top. The entire belly of this fly, the underside of the hook, is all going to be white. But um, I like to just do one or two tie ins of white on top as well. It ends up looking a little more natural when we're done. So, that tied in. Force it back. Now invert the fly again. And another clump of white. A lot of people worry that this uses a whole lot of this SF fiber and it really doesn't. Um, if you buy just a couple packs, you know, one pack of white and then your uh, accent colors for the back and stuff, you can probably tie a dozen or more of these flies with, with no issue if you're using the right amount of material. A lot of people, like I said, it's really hard to teach, but they pull too much material. 
you can actually see I've really only done two tie-ins, top and bottom, but you can already see that density building and the flies kind of filling out. So, done those two. Now that we've done our two tie-ins on top, we're gonna go to a lavender color. Shad, um, when they flash, especially the hickory shad, they have this kind of a light purple hue to them right underneath the green in their back. And uh, this lavender color, I think this color SF is actually, they call it light purple. Um, it's a really, really good imitator of that. Let's take a nice little clump of that. Lay it right over the white. I find myself using this fly more uh, typically later season in the shad run just because the water tends to clear up on us and uh, sometimes they can get a little picky. The stripers can with the, you know, just with what they want to eat. When that water gets real clear, I find uh, they still don't turn this fly down just because it's a really, really accurate color and profile representation of a small hickory shad or like a blueback herring. So, let me go back to the bottom. Grab us uh, another clump of white. And this is the uh, UV white SF. They make it in three or four different variations of white, I believe. I think they have bait fish belly. Um, I think just regular white and then UV white. And there's, there's a couple other ones too, but uh, I like the UV white. Pretty much anything with that UV kind of glisten gloss fiber in there, I... I really like the way it looks. So that one little line of light purple is all you really need. It will show up in the water. So now to kind of build that natural color taper or natural uh, color progression to the dark back of a hickory shed, I go to, this is a, what they call camo SF. It's just kind of a little bit lighter green than what I'll finish the fly with on the back. Now that we're getting towards maybe the last two or three tie-ins, I'm going to use a little bit thicker, thicker clumps. That's a little too much, but there we go. Just maybe a little too much. Pull that out. So lay that right on top. Make sure you got them. It's easiest just to capture these right dead center of the SF and then trim it because at the end of the fly, I mean, we're, we're going to trim it and it's just easier to trim the taper than to try to build the taper with the material. If you were trying to tie these eight or 10 inches long, you could build the taper by, you know, once you got to the head using shorter tie-ins as in you, instead of tying it in the middle, you would tie it in maybe 60, 40. But um, it's just easier when the size that I typically fish is about a five inch fly. So it's just easier to trim it at the end belly, a little more white SF. So, hold it on the other side of the hook. And the reason I use the mono thread, I said it was an important part of this fly, and that's because this material is translucent. Um, if you were to use like a solid white or a solid colored thread, it would be just a blatant line right through the fly. You'd see it. Um, I like to try and keep it hidden and the thread, you know, this, this material kind of bleeds right through the thread and this mono being real thin um, and being clear, it, it just ends up working out nicely. So, gonna do, now if we went from two tie-ins of white a tie-in of light purple, a tie-in of camo, and now we're going to, this is, I believe, golden olive. It's just, a, I don't really care about the gold aspect of it as much as I do. I just really like that color green. That's a, uh, that is a almost perfect representation of a hickory shed back. Get a nice, somewhat healthy clump of it because we're at that, you know, maybe do one or two more tie-ins here. We're going to let the material help bulk up the head of the fly. This 
this will be our last tie in on top. It looks like there's really no rhyme or reason. I don't really pay attention to how many times I tie this material in, like how many tie ins I have per fly. I just work my way from the back of the hook to the eye. Sometimes I'm spacing them a little bit more. I might only get four tie ins and other times I might get as many as six. So it's, you know, there's a little bit of variation in them, but they all come out looking about the same. If you have any kind of wily fibers that don't want to do what you want them to do, you can just kind of pluck them out of there. So once you get that set where you want it, capture it. And now for the last tie-in of the white, flip to the belly. And the belly, all those clumps are pretty much uniform all the way throughout. This is probably the only one that I make a little bit thicker, the very last one. And you'll you'll find your own kind of style with these. It's a real basic style of uh, bait fish fly. And just because it's basic doesn't by any means mean it's any less effective. But the other way I like to tie these, and might do a video on it later, is uh, what's called high tying them, where all of the material is tied in on top of the hook. So you do white, 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 and then just the backing colors. And uh, they're kind of cool, gives you the whole hook gap. They don't foul hardly at all. But uh, in terms of tying in the material, we're done. Now the only thing left to do, tie in our lateral scale on the sides. This is an optional step. I just, when I used to tie these by the dozen for guys I always like the way they looked with this little bit of lateral scale on the side and uh it's just a couple extra seconds so get that tied in right on the side and then fold it around the eye just get a look at it on the other side just make sure you got it going right down the shank of the hook Okay, now, once you get that tied in, you can go ahead and whip finish your mono off. Now, make sure you double whip finish. So, that's one. And here's two. Just helps with durability. This stuff being slick, having a little bit of memory, you kind of have to just double it up. Okay. We'll cut that. Now, one other little insurance uh, measure you can take is to take some regular thread, and I do this on most of mine, and start your thread right in front or right behind the eye and work it right over top of the mono. This just kind of gives you an extra layer to add some durability. And all you have to do is cover that mono and then whip finish. Like so. Okay. There we go. Alrighty. Now, we're going to flip the fly on its side. It's uh, one benefit of the Norvice. It actually, when you lay the fly on its side, you know that it's pointing straight up. So that way you can make sure your eyes are exactly where they need to be. Just kind of flaring that material out a little bit behind the thread here. Now. Get the vise on its side. For eyes on this size fly, I like to use an eight millimeter. It just matches the size really well. These are uh, spawn eyes. And they're nice. They're a nice kind of golden yellow color. That really uh, imitates a hickory shad really well. I'm gonna put a dot of Loctite. It kind of shot out on me there. Okay. Kind of work it in. And a dot right here. There we go. And 
and that Loctite goes a long way. You don't need really anywhere near as much as I just shot on the fly, but it's fine. It'll work. You're going to press those down all the way to the shank. You're basically gluing those eyes to the shank, and it's actually going to kind of lock everything in place. What I do is I kind of butt the eyes right up to where that thread covering our mono thread is. So, and ideally, when they glue, they will actually kind of seal together. Oops, that one slid off on us. No big deal. But didn't quite have enough glue on this side. There we go. Hold that in place for a second. With this Loctite, you can actually feel it heat up when it starts to kick. That's when you know it's locked into place. Like so. All right. Now, final piece of uh, durability. We're gonna go ahead and coat that thread. You can do this right when you finish too, but go ahead and coat that thread with some solar res. This is just the uh, bone dry formula. What you can do, you're getting ready to hit this with your torch, you can kind of pull up on the material on top and bottom. That'll just kind of start the head with a little bit fatter profile, which is not a bad thing. Hey Josh, the camera on the wall cut off. Yeah, I heard it. I'm almost done. I only have like one more step. Good to go? Yeah. Okay. So, other than trimming, that's pretty much it. If you, uh, when you attach the eyes, if you notice, I noticed this one's got a little bit of a gap in between the eyes. You can kind of hit that with whatever uh, resin you have handy. It's not 100% necessary, but it uh, just looks pretty to fill those gaps up sometimes. Just kind of work this resin around the head. There we go. Okay. Cure for a second. Okay. Now, all we got left to do is give this guy a haircut. What I like to do is kind of fan the material out a little bit. As you'll see, kind of just open it up about as wide as you can get it and then just do like a gentle stroke of the fly back to kind of put a little bit of memory into it. Then you're gonna take a good pair of scissors. I use these orange handle Fiskers. You can get these at just about any craft store. They really are one of the uh, better pairs of fly tying scissors you'll ever use. 
you just want to kind of knock the edges off. You don't want to do any kind of hard cuts because you'll get a really, really defined straight line. And it doesn't take much to mess up the shape of one of these. Like I said, you just kind of drag your scissors down the fly as you cut so you don't have any real, real hard set in lines. And you'll see sometimes these tie in points, they kind of separate and won't mesh together. That's fine. Um, as soon as the fly gets wet, everything will just kind of mold all together. What I do a lot of times as I'm tying it, just kind of twist everything and it'll build some memory in there. So there we go. Then only thing I'd say, just knock a little bit of this length off. All I'm doing now is just kind of shaving the edges and building that natural bait fish shape. And then all you really got left, you got some weird little straggly ones. You can get in there and kind of just clean those up like so. Okay. Twist everything together again. Get a nice, long, slender bait fish profile, just like what we're trying to imitate with these shad. Now just one last little bit of uh, realism to add here. Just take a black Sharpie or a Copic marker or whatever you want to use and uh, put a few dots down the back. Try to keep them only in the green section. And typically I'll do, oops, didn't get the hook in the vise very tight. I usually do three or four matching ones down the back on each side just because that's how a hickory looks in the water. I'll just go to five and kind of fade it out. Yeah. And when you do it with this material, you can see from the other side where the dots are so you can match them up. I'm left-handed, so I've got to work across the vise here. All right. You want to fix that before I'm done, Josh? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. You see, you got those lines drawn, or the dots. There you have it. Nice little about five and a half inch long hickory shed, blueback herring, just a generic uh, long slender bait fish, which is you know exactly what these stripers and bass are eating this time of year when they're chasing the shed up the rivers. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.